Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about my quilting journey and life in a northern town. Show notes can be found at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. Please leave a comment and we can continue the conversation online. My name is Vicki. This week's episode of the podcast is a live recording of a trunk show that I did at the local quilt shop. I want to thank Delphine's Quilt Shop for hosting this event. It was an opportunity for me to share about my quilting journey and how I went in my design process from an idea to making a quilt. Enjoy and just know that it is a live recording at the local quilt shop. So there's a little bit of background noise and you can hear people interacting with my presentation. As always, if you enjoy this podcast, um, become a patron. There will be links at the show notes page on my webpage. And once again, I want to ask you to share a review on iTunes or any other podcast place. <laughs> I'm not sure what you call them, news feeds. And like and share so we can continue to have conversations even beyond the the podcast. Thanks again, everyone. I'm using this also to see what time it is. Come on, we're going to do a chat about um, this particular quilt. I'm going to share um, about my quilting process, a little bit about myself. And I found out um, a few years ago, um, I had kids at home, but quilting has always been part of my life. I knew my great-grandmothers, they all quilted. My mother and I wished we knew how to quilt. And so somewhere in the 1980s, uh, well, in the 70s, actually, we wanted to continue a tradition that was in our family, which was everybody, the aunts, made baby quilts for all the kids. And my mom didn't know how to quilt, and we did the best. I was a little girl. Um, we had a cardboard template, polyester double knit fabric, and we <laughs> made quilts just like the quilt my grandma made me. Um, I still have that quilt. They're hand tied with yarn, and you know what? Those polyester quilts wash up really good. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one of those quilts um, to this day, as well as my great grandmother's quilt, which always inspired me. And as I got older, you know, I had kids, and you have limited time and resources, but I kept sewing, and I was terrible at it. My first quilt um, was for my baby. When I got pregnant, I was going to college, and one of the ladies in the day room was someone my grandmother's age who went back to school, and it was the icebreaker. She had written a term paper in her English 101 class about quilting. And that struck up a friendship, and she taught me a couple of things, and then told me, "Hun, you need to take a class, because <laughs> I can't teach you everything you need to know. So that's where I started, and uh, I hand quilted for a long time, and until um, I was telling some of the people here earlier that I started long arming about eight years ago, that was uh, something my mother and I did. So together, my mom and I, through time have grown together in our quilting and long arming and she's still um she lives downstate now she retired we're gaylord people and um, i've lived here most of my life so what i wanted to say is i am asked a lot about how do you get this stuff done when you work full time what do you do with it and the other part is how do you stay creative because i started like most of us do we make patterns from people who make wonderful patterns. But then there is, comes a point over time where I'm like, I wanted to make something myself that I had from here in my brain and I wanted it to translate to a quilt. And that is part of the whole speech and I uh, want to encourage people. So who am I? My name is Vicki Holloway. I am a lifelong quilter. I live here in Gaylord. I work full time, but how do I get these things done? Well, one stitch, one block, one row at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, that is how I quilt. I am not one of these people who can do what I, my friend Julie here said, 
sit one day and cut all the blasts out. I can't do it. My ADHD gets going, I get overwhelmed, <laughs> and I can't tell you how many quilts are in bins in my house that I tried to do that way. So what I did is I decided a long time ago, my style is one block at a time, maybe pull a fabric collection together and work with that and then add and subtract as I go. So that's how my design process is, is that I have ideas. So where do the ideas come from? Well, a long time ago, Instagram was a baby and it's now become a really big thing. And there is photo a day challenges. And I got roped into one. My friend nominated me to be in this photo a day challenge. And I started that probably eight years ago. Taking pictures every day for these ridiculous challenges. Orange, curly, point of view, flat lay. I didn't know what that stuff was. I researched it. And taking pictures on my cell phone made me see the world in a different way. Because I got to look at it in a different point of view, that everything is extraordinary and not ordinary. And that's how I started in 2013. I made a quilt because from my traditionally based background in my template non-rotary cutting class that I took in the 80s, I had this idea Ooh, wow. for this quilt. Because my aunt said, hey, I saw, I bought a quilt, okay. it's a log cabin quilt, and can you recreate it for me? <laughs> so, she's not a quilter, but she knew our grandmother quilted. I got it, it was not a log cabin, it was a diamond braid, Texas diamond braid, French braid, mm. on point, elongated, oversized diamond. <laughs> and I said, are you kidding me? She goes, oh, it's a log cabin, it's Amish, it'll be great. And I'm like, no way. But I had electric quilter in a brand new program. So something I have found is that I like challenges a lot. So when you look at this, what was inspired from that quilt that my aunt owned is the middle and this row. What I did is I took her elongated diamonds and I squared them up. And then I put them on a different a medallion style in her quilt they were all on point and they were very large these tree shaped blocks and then I decided I was going to keep subtracting from it and go from a busy inspired tree shaped block to the same block in the next row only it had a few deletions from it and then I ended it with a very traditional square within a square I went all the way around with my favorite color, hot pink, and it was wild and it was crazy, and I said, I'm taking a Zentangle class, I'm new to this long arm quilting thing, and I went nuts with graffiti style quilting, and this happened to be an AQS show in 2013 in Grand Rapids. Wow, that's, that's Don't look at my binding because it stinks. <laughs> I didn't know how to miter corners. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. And I thought, you know what, I like round corners. So I got some really good advice from uh, somebody who said, her name is, well, I interviewed her on my podcast, it was Angela Walters, and she said, Vicki, don't point out your mistakes. She said, this was a juxtaposition of all the sharp, pointy things in here to round the corners to make it a art statement. Well, I was on a roll. A photo a day challenge brought me to Virginia Beach to visit my daughter. And I was taking pictures and I shared some pictures on my blog and a co-worker said, Vicki, don't you see a quilt in that photo? And I said, I sure do, but I don't know how to finish it. She goes, you'll figure it out. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, she gave me a big challenge. <laughs> so this is an odd shaped quilt on purpose because I'm in Virginia Beach is like most oceanfront communities, mm. you have high-rise hotels. Mm -hmm. And the high-rise hotels, all the day I was there in August, it was hot and everyone was swimming and they threw brightly colored beach towels mm -hmm. on the balcony. Mm -hmm. So this is a modern representation of 
a very simplistic quilt that's really more in a um, minimalist style. Mm -hmm. So I simply quilted it because I wanted it to look like waves of water reflecting in the windows. Again, I thought, no, oh, my binding isn't great. And it held me back on turning this one into a new magazine that was out there called Quilty Magazine. And um, this happened to be in that magazine also in the spring of 2013, which led me to meet Mary Fonz herself, who was the editor of the magazine, and they did a little internet show, and we got to talk about this as my quilt. One of the most fun moments in my life, actually, because she asked me a really important question that really shaped where I went with what I did. And she asked me, what kind of quilter are you? Mm -hmm. And I go, I don't know, I'm just a quilter. She goes, no, are you a modern quilter? Because our magazine is a modern magazine. I said, no, I'm not a modern quilter. I'm traditionally based. I like to take things up to date with a twist. And I called myself a fusion quilter. I'm fusing everything I know with the moment in time of inspiration. And so that challenged me to think about what is modern quilting? Because I know modern quilting has really got the hallmarks of this shibori fabric here. It's very traditionally based fabric. But modern quilting has a lot of negative space. Sometimes it's oversized. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more art quilting. Sometimes modern quilting is really a play on the grid or maybe not having our traditionally gridded blocks. So it made me really research what is modern quilting because I didn't know. I thought modern quilting meant now, that here and now. Well, that's kind of more modern in some ways. If you go to research like QuiltCon and that stuff, they look at more like mid-century modern as their type of aesthetic. And it made me think, no, that's not me. I'm more probably contemporary traditionalist who likes to call herself a fusion quilter because <laughs> I fuse everything together. Well, that made me really think about what what I wanted to do because I wanted to try more improv and I wanted to try fusing what I knew, old and new. So this is really the <laughs> juxtaposition quilt. This is called Michigan My Michigan Quilt. <laughs> it made to MQX last oh, 2016. Um, when you look at it, it is this was like the North Star, and it really does have a story. The North Star that kind of led me throughout my whole life in Michigan. I've always been a fan of the sky and <coughs> northern lights and our beautiful mountains. Northern Michigan is full of water. I come from a family who <coughs> both um, have farming, which is in mid-Michigan, in the middle of the quilt. But it also has um, the <coughs> logging history. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. great grandpa was actually a logger in Sheboygan. So that's what <coughs> this is all about. And I tried tiny little quilting, and some of it worked, and some of it, eh, it's okay. But <laughs> I learned how to do a mitered corner by now. <laughs> and yay. yay! So it did go to um, MQX, and I was pretty happy with that, which is a more that's another national quilt show, but they have a little bit more of art quilting as well as, um, I've never been to it, but this is what people tell me. And they also have like garments and they have a lot more of those types of things there. Vicki MQX for those who don't know what that's called. Machine Quilting Expo. I had to think about it there. And the one I went to was in Springfield, but they also have a show in New England. And I believe it's in Vermont or Connecticut. But I, I've only been to a couple quilt shows in my life, believe it or not. So when I started entering, I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't quite know, but I actually have been to a couple shows now. And um, I really like the challenge of trying to bring in color, I love color. Mm -hmm. And I quilt and I start to finish everything myself. Currently, I do farm out 
one of my friends is an excellent binder, so she did the binding <laughs> on this one. <laughs> so uh, this is where I started going more from an idea to making it a more improvisationally pieced thing. So there's like no real pattern to this. And what I did is a couple of test samples of a quick curve ruler, which made these funky trees on the side. And I love fairy gardens. This is my fairy garden quilt. And what inspired me on this particular quilt is the unicorn fabric. I like that. The unicorn is something that I've always loved. My grandmother, who didn't quilt, um, did needlepoint. And she always was buying kits, and the one with the unicorn that was a quilt or a tapestry in the Metropolitan Museum of New York. So Delphine said, you're going to Scotland this year. You should go look at Stirling Castle has a reproduction of that tapestry. And this is a more stylized version of the hunt, which mm -hmm. is that particular tapestry. And I took it a step further because I wanted the influence of this border which really represents my grandmother to me with the concept that we love fairies and magic and that anything is possible. And I found a paper piece, free pattern in the middle. This one is not my design with a little chimney. And I thought it has to go in there because <laughs> it's adorable. This was also an, a big experiment in free motion quilting. Wow, yeah. So I wanted to really exploit all of the negative space and open space and try to go sunshine and shadow like we were in a garden. So that's my fairy garden quilt. And it was really fun to make. A lot of people are like, well, how, how do you know what to do with those mushrooms? Well, you just start chopping. <laughs> Same with the trees. You just put down a shape and you take your ruler and you start cutting and then make it real big because at the end you're going to square it up. And there you have wonky trees and mushrooms. <laughs> I really, really enjoy doing that kind of work. Well, once I got pretty comfortable with all of the improvisationally piece stuff, I did the Art Council's 100 Day Project, and it was my challenge in a whole cloth quilt. So I did another collage style quilt with all the different things I knew, and I was trying out new shapes in this particular quilt. And here's the bag. Mm. So it was just a fun thing just to try shapes. So the question I get is, well, how do you have time for all this? In fact, I've been asked that today. So what I want to say is that I do things in small chunks of time. I really, really do 15 to 20 minutes every day of a piecing project, 15 to 20 minutes a day, or maybe 30, because long arming uh, a queen size quilt generally will take me about a half hour to 45 minutes. So I have, so now we're up to an hour. And then I will take probably in the evening before I go to bed, I answer emails, do a lot of my blog posts and social media. But I have a schedule. You know, I post certain days, I do videos certain days, I do all kinds of things twice a month. Not every week because I wouldn't have time, but twice a month. But I realized there was a book out there I read a few years ago called The Happiness Project. And she really emphasized it's what you do every day that adds up to success. Because before I got to this quilt, I would only quilt something maybe twice a year. Because I would get a plethora of tops and then maybe I would hand quilt something. But machine quilting was a burden to me. And then I got thinking, well, if I want to get better, it's kind of like our discussion about applique before this class. I'm terrible at applique. And I don't do it very often because I'm not very good at it. But if I practice, I would. You have to be passionate, I guess, about it. I and mean, you have to have a love for it. But as far as the quilting goes in the, the process, it's every day. So I do a creative project, a long army project. I do my internet stuff. And I do my piecing, and then I have, a lot of inspiration does come from the internet. 
See, part of why I wanted to talk to everybody is I don't know who occulters are here in Taylor. I really don't. I've tried to make time out of my schedule to go to meetings or guilds or classes, but where I went, probably a decade ago, was the internet. I couldn't find people who were making crazy stuff like I did. And I found them. I found them on Facebook. I found them in the blogging world. I found them on Instagram. And if you're not on in Instagram or any of those places, check it out. It's a lot of stuff. That's how I keep up with what's going on, what's hot. Because the other part is people in California, by the time their idea is filtered to us, it might be five years. And mm -hmm. we're behind. And I don't want to wait that long. I want to know what's hot now. So that's really how I do it every day. It's just like exercising. It's just like when I took violin lessons as a little girl. I practiced every day for 20, 30 minutes. And that took me a year to play a scale. But eventually, I did play in an orchestra. Not professionally, it was in college. But I never thought when I was a kid I would ever be good enough to play second violin anywhere. But it was a long, continued grind through it, but have a curiosity about how things are done in challenges because I've actually played violin but I taught myself how to play string bass and I've taken those lessons to quilting because it was like yeah I don't know how to applicate and I've tried several times and I know now I just have to practice but piecing my very first quilt I threw it away I threw it away in a trash can in my <laughs> sewing room and I fished it out and finished it. <laughs> After a week, I, it was like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I go, oh, it's not that bad. It's a cute little quilt. <laughs> so I just continued. You persevere. And you just continue to practice. Here's just one, another Can one that, one sure, that would be great. I wanted to try a bigger quilt. And this is just a mm -hmm. sampler in, in the low volume of a batik pack of just different stitches because I wanted practice. This is like a winter project. And it also is something that I show people about different shapes when you're quilting, just to continue to try different shapes. I'll point a few out. I really love this. And this is a just an E and a swirl. And I, the last quilt I'll show you, um, I did that as an all over pattern. My favorite is just these swirls. You can make so many different types of variation from it, as well as leaf patterns. And how about simple wavy lines? Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, look at that. I missed a thread. I'm going to have to carry that. Oh, <laughs> I say they grow. I always they say do. They grow. Where do they come from? Yeah, they grow. So let's look at the back because sometimes it's yeah, easier to size. see. <laughs> and the mitered corners. I did. I got a mitered <laughs> corner. And I actually won these labels online. And I thought, I never labeled a quilt before. I probably should do that. I might. Like, I might want to have somebody get this someday and remember that this mm -hmm. granny made mm -hmm. these, this quilt. But you can see I did free motion, Baptist fans, paisleys, water, lots of leaf and feather inspired work. And I learned a lesson on this quilt. Density doesn't equal better. We always think that when we are quilting that sometimes the more we quilt it, the better it's going to be. Oh my gosh, this quilt is really heavy. Yeah. This is not a good quilt for just a cuddle. It's kind of stiff. So these are lots of lessons. Here's a fun one. It's like a circle within a circle. So I, I just like looking at this just to jump start my creativity when I get stuck. Oh yeah, dragon scales. What do I do when I get stuck? I pull this out. I go to the internet and look at other people's work to be inspired. So those ideas translated to a podcast last year because I thought, i got to talk about it. I talk about quilting all the time. Someone said, we well, should just record it. So one of my guests said, Vicki, let's do a collaboration. So this is the year of the mini quilt. I decided I don't need any more queen size ones. I, this is the only quilt I did not quilt. Leah Day quilted this one. She has a big website free motion quilting and quite honestly all our content for free motion is free. I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. She's really good. She's really good. 
She's great on camera, and she has a setup where you can, she showed how she quilted this. I mean, I'll pass this one around. Look how tiny her stippling is. It's just amazingly small. I would need jeweler's glasses. But I did improvisationally piece the block, and I thought, this was great. Collaborating with somebody, this was not how I would have envisioned it at the end. But it turned out so cool. I mean, did you quilt hers? Not yet. Or We're going to probably do that next year. Oh, okay. And, um, but we've talked, we've talked about it. So, so how do you take an idea and translate it into a quilt? That's where this led me to my social media passion as I started a group on Facebook last year called My Creative Corner 3. It's a group for actually we do daily prompt challenges. I love the photo a day thing so much. I wanted to translate it to my project, but then my mom goes, well put it on somewhere where I can do it too. Mm -hmm. So that translated to now, um, we do something every day. It goes to my concept of one block at a time, doing something every day, 20 minutes. It's really meant to be a jump start to your day. And you can do your own prompt challenge every day. It doesn't have to be manufactured by somebody, but it's easier sometimes when somebody else does mm -hmm. the thinking. So we decided to do a series of 20 minutes a day, and then we were going to play with color, two colors, which was blue, I chose blue and white, but we practiced all kinds of things first. We did doodling, we did drawing, we did taking a photo, black and white, just to see how you can get value and contrast in a photo is how you were going to pick fabric for your block. And I just took some scrappy fabric, because you know, arrows are hot. They are a hot design item. My daughter wanted arrows for her baby's room. And I wonder where my first arrow went. Oh well, doesn't matter. And I like I didn't like the fact that all of the arrows I saw either piece or paper piece, they were horizontal in the quilting things that I saw online. And then if you wanted it to be um, on point or have a diagonal, you, you really had to set it on point and you had to go through the whole thing of figuring out setting triangles and stuff, which is sometimes a challenge for me. But what I thought was, well, why don't I just make a block that's already straight grid setting, but put the arrow on the angle because I'd never seen anybody do that before. And so that got me thinking, well, how can you do that? And that's kind of an odd way to do it. <coughs> what I did was I cut out a white background. And these particular quilts, you'd have to read the pattern, but they're very large. And you can see right here is the size mm -hmm. of that quilt block. And there's only 16 quilt blocks in the one on the wall, and I'll remove this here in a minute, and you can see it. And then I took a jelly roll, it was two and a half inches, and I cut that big square in half. Mm -hmm. And I inset a jelly roll much longer than the, the actual width of that cutting it in half. So you want to go a couple inches longer than measuring if you were to measure the diagonal. Mm -hmm. So you can make this block, it's beautiful, you can make it any size you want. Mm -hmm. You can make it tiny, you can make it huge, which I thought this was, I liked because I wanted that big impact of the blue and white, but yet a lot of negative space on this because I like to play around with free motion feathers. So I cut it in half, you put your strip in. It's really as easy as one, two, three, because then you decide how big do you want your points, your arrow heads, and this was a layer cake that I believe I cut down to nine inches and sewed it on the entire square with the inset. Sew it, I sew it from corner to corner of this corner square, and these are the bonus triangles. These are what I cut off, left over <laughs> after I did this. So now I have 16 <laughs> little ones. It's a bonus quilt. So I was playing around on the design wall before you got here. Some of, you know, here, if you really want to go on point, 
you could make arrows going up or trees. You could go to a smaller um, version of the one on the wall where the arrows are pointing out, arrows going in different directions. And that I thought, you know, how simple was this quilt? I thought, it's so simple. Oh my gosh, who's going to think this is any good? Do you ever do that to yourself, you know, when you get a project done? As you get done, you hate it, and you're thinking, oh, it's so stupid. Oh, thank you. I do it all the time. Yeah, I do it all the time. Makes you feel like you're an imposter. I've been quilting for 25, 30 years. I still don't know what I'm doing. So I, I showed it to a, one of my online friends, and she said, Vicki, you really should try to submit your sample block plus the EQ rendering to Motivate Shop. And I'm like, I've tried before, I've been rejected a hundred times from them. She says, no, seriously, turn it mm -hmm. in. So I did an EQ6 rendering, because I don't have the newest version. And my one sample block, which I can't find. And um, she said it was clever. I go, well, okay, it's clever, it's cool. But it's so simple, you could do it. And she said, guess what, you get to pick whatever new fabric line you want. I said, cool, blue and white. Where's the blue and white line? And I happened to find this traditional Shibori reproduction. I actually emailed Debbie Maddie, is the designer and quilter. She lives in Fort Worth, Texas. And I said, Debbie, do you have any little stories you want me to share with people about how this is made? And it is a traditional hand dyeing with indigo method. She's gone all over the world and studied this. She went to Japan, she's gone to Europe, she takes the show on the road and teaches Shibori dyeing. Yeah. And this is her actual dyeing from the batch that Moda picked up and reproduced. What I like is, I don't know how to do hand dyeing, I just got new carpet in my living room, and I don't want blue dye all over my house because I am a mess when I do stuff like that. <laughs> my husband's garage is his, and I don't want to get blue dyes everywhere. But Delphine is encouraging me to try it. It's not as hard <laughs> and getting messes everywhere. If you have a sink, you can do it. So Debbie said, that's really my story, is I am in love with the Japanese tradition of these patterns. And there's a special way that she gets and she knows how to reproduce a lot of these. But what's great is kind of like tie-dyeing. There's always variation. There's always room for creativity. And she and I have friended each other, and I have to tell you, she's the sweetest lady. She runs a quilt shop in Texas, too, I believe, called The Carriage Company, and she's passionate about this, and I'm like, blue and white, it's very traditional. The fabric looks modern, but it's based in tradition that's hundreds of years old. Yes, Delphine? How, I'm curious, how did you get that fabric before it was even in the stores? Moda sent it to me, they because okay. it was part of the promotion huh? of... Um, they wanted, they wanted things on Moda Bake Shop. So this is cool. If you guys ever have a great idea and you spend it and they accept it, they want people to see what this looks like real life before the fabric comes out. Because if you're like me, I have tons of collections of pre-cuts that over the years I've collected and go, what am I going to do with this? It's so pretty I can't cut into it. So it's part of it is this is their way of saying, hey, you can make this quilt, and mine, I listed it as intermediate just because of the bias edge here, but it really is something, you know, it doesn't take a ton of skills to make. What, uh, so that's how I got it, and that was part of their promotion, just like if you were to submit to a magazine or something else, a lot of times they will send you an up-and-coming fabric line to give everyone ideas of what you can make with this particular line. So... I just wanted to end with, I didn't go to market, I've never been to quilt market, but an online friend of mine needed some help, and I just got this back from her, and she went to market, and this is not my pattern, but I quilted it in that ease and curls and all over. Krista Watson is a modern quilter. She is a designer. This is her first fabric line called Modern Marks. And this, I thought it was pretty clever. And the all over quilting I thought was pretty good. But in each little square, I did sharp stippling. 
Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to detract from her mm -hmm. fabric. Mm -hmm. I just heard a great um, uh, podcast, and the lady called it uh, annoyingly, engagingly, cheery, and awesome kind of colors <laughs> that she likes. And I'm like, that's me. If I were going to design fabric, it would be in this kind of colorway because I love color. So this is um, another way that we can help other quilters is by testing things for them and helping them out. And so I tested the patterns, this block. I made a quilt for her that went to the show and I got to keep the quilt for fun. Here's the quilting on the back. So. To know that how did I get better at piecing when I started doing my everyday one block at a time thing. I actually test patterns mm -hmm. for people and it forces me to do things I would never do. Mm -hmm. It forces me to try it okay when I don't like it. Mm -hmm. It forces me to read patterns outside of the way I would design them and maybe learn how somebody else expresses words and numbers in a way. So I tested them. Um, I tested a lot of blocks for Quilt Maker Magazine for about five cycles. I'm taking a break right now, but I'll get back to it. Again, it was something I didn't have to think about. It was my practice every day. I made a block. Just little blocks, mm -hmm. 12 and a half inches are all their blocks. And it fed into my creativity, using up scraps, mm -hmm. and it also <laughs> made me a better piecer. Because remember, I threw that first quilt away. It's, you know, piecing for a long time is super hard for me. I was always more into the quilting part. So now I'm more into all of it. All of it. So let's move this down and you can look at the, oh, thank you, Delphine. Mm -hmm. You can look at the oversized version of Eros that I made. This was the one that Motivate Shop put on their website and those are the bonus blocks. And I haven't done anything with them because I keep thinking, I'm gonna, I have some of the leftover um, pre-cuts and things from it. I enjoy working with grunge, so the background on this is Moda Grunge, and it's the lightest, whitest one versus the yellow-based one. And it's a play, again, on oversized blocks and letting the fabric be the focus mm -hmm. of this particular quilt. So today, Delphine, um, for everybody who sat through and listened, um, thank you. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And she's offering um, the fabric and having a special on it. And so you can talk to her about all the specifics. But this has been my journey so far in the last couple years. From humble beginnings of using polyester fabric and a square cardboard <laughs> template that I just found, by the way, in my old childhood sewing basket because I don't throw anything away. Um, to, to take in a risk. Chopping up fabrics and going, I don't know if they'll think this is anything worth sharing with other people. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. And that's where I think we have to create from, is from our heart. You know, there comes a point when you are designing things, you can't make it for something. We have to do it because the vision that we have, like my oceanfront quilt, I took a picture of visiting my daughter, which was a wonderful memory of a beautiful place that I would never want to live, but it's pretty, and it's a great place to visit, and translate it into fabric, however you want to do it. Sometimes they work. I have a few that do not, but that doesn't mean that I love them any less than the ones that other people gave me positive feedback for. So I just want to encourage everybody today, take a few minutes every day in your routine. I'm a six o'clock in the morning sewer and quilter because I go to work, and when I get home, I'm exhausted. But I'm a gym person in the evening. So you gotta pick whatever works for you. Uh, now it's deciding what I want to spend my time in. Otherwise, I sit in front of the TV and watch football and terrible junk TV. And I decided that there's better ways to spend my life. And mm -hmm. when my children were young, obviously my schedule wasn't as much open to doing mm -hmm. what I wanted to create. So you have, you have seasons of life, we have our priorities, mm -hmm. and just take a schedule and do what you can do. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm much more happy with my creativity because I do it every day versus 
pulling out a quilt twice a year mm -hmm. and then getting very frustrated and throwing it in the trash when I'm done. Mm -hmm. Or my mom has a few that she's given to me that she doesn't want to look at anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's sad. Don't do that. Finish it. I thought we cut one up yeah. into placements. Yes. yes. And I, I, or donate they them. Pretty. There's so many ways you could donate a quilt if you really are unhappy when it's done. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions,